यू नो द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड अश्विन दैट यही समय है सही समय है we have to lay the foundation of india for the next 1000 years how much of what we are seeing is political you are saying that this is civilizational you are seeking to lift this moment say that this is about us as a people as a civilization these are political slogans the, the, we have a election few months from now opponents from the india alliance will say you know they are making it seem as if the next mahatma gandhi next chatrapati shivaji maharaj don't get fooled ultimately it's all about politics is that question for me Ashwin, it is yes so i mean you you know i want to just go back for a very brief moment to the fact that uh, amish referenced time uh and the movement of time and how you look at time and uh in the prime minister speech there was a wonderful reference uh to the beginning of a new cycle of a kal chakra and mm. as we all know kal chakra is the wheel of time and the fundamental difference between the western view and the i would say the indic view is basically one of uh, the west looking at it as linear and us looking at it as circular that everything that has happened in the past will also happen in the future time tends to repeat itself in cycles and he talks about the fact that this is a new cycle a new kal chakra and in that sense i am proud that we are now looking at a time where uh in some ways we are already seeing uh the progress that is happening in so many different ways uh rahul i mean uh, just look at ayodhya itself uh you know i mean uh, my understanding is that the entire tourism circuit of ayodhya is going to add a huge amount of money into the uh, state coffers year on year uh the number of hotels that are coming up the railway station the airport as well as the fact that fundamentally india is a devotional country and so you are going to see people now not only flocking to ayodhya but to all other pilgrim spots as they develop okay this is only in terms of this is only in terms of one aspect which is ayodhya but you now look at the entire overall economic development that is happening so i think the difference between the words being uttered politically versus the words that are backed up by a lot of action on the ground that makes a humongous difference i think the reason why a lot of people are willing to accept what pradhan pradhan mantri ji said is because of the fact that they feel that his his, his heart is in the right place okay, but and that his intent is in the right place but let's also remember the fact now i want to welcome uh, pavan verma into our conversation that while we're saying all of what we are uh, the mosque that was supposed to be built up on the outskirts of ayodhya which is part of the same judgment that work is still caught up in all kinds of red tape uh now bhagwan ram is one of the most important gods of india the question to you pavan is that is there a subterranean subconscious effort in the way like for example on the flight today and elsewhere again we're seeing jai shri ram etc there are those who may feel uncomfortable a what about them b how much of this according to you is a civilizational project how much of you according to you is in reality a political project pavan verma uh, thank you rahul and my warm greetings to amish and ashwin uh look uh, rahul i think what we saw at the pran pratishtha has three messages and i will answer your question while explaining all three first of all the building of the temple was finally the validation of faith uh there was the belief among hindus for centuries that this is the birthplace of shri ram and that a uh, temple in his honor needs to be built where evidence now shows a temple stood and was demolished and this validation of faith and this is very important took place not arbitrarily or illegally as was attempted in the past but as a consequence of a supreme court judgment which is in consonance with maryada which is what maryada purushottam ram is secondly in my view the ceremony we saw yesterday mm -hmm. is to a great extent the correction of an earlier historical narrative mm -hmm. 
and a reclamation of a culture and a civilizational legacy, which uh, in a way was neglected, ignored, marginalized in the period of the uh, last uh, few centuries and was not rectified even after 1947. Okay. As was mentioned, I think, by Ashwin, there was a tremendous setback and destruction of uh, the continuity of Hindi civilization for over five, six, eight thousand years by the Turkic invasion. Now, I am not trying to excavate past acrimony, but the attempt to gloss over the level of destruction, Will Durant has called it one of the bloodiest chapters in world history. I think that remains something that people wanted to be corrected and the building of the temple is one sign that that is being done. Now thirdly, and this is directly in response to your question, was the messaging from the temple about people who may be less than comfortable by the fact that uh, what it appears almost to be a Hindu dominant state. Now I found both Mohan Bhagwaji's uh, speech and that of the Prime Minister giving very important pointers to this effect. In particular, Bhagwaji, in his speech, I was surprised, referred to Samanvay, inclusion. He referred to Karuna, compassion. He referred to Maryada Purna Acharan. That is behavior which is consonant with good conduct. He, he, he mentioned uh, that there is importance of anushasan, discipline, don't take the law into your own hands. And above all, he quoted Tulsi Das's lines about the definition of Ram Rajya. Mm. And Tulsi Das says, Dehik, Devik, Bhautik Tapa. Ram Raj Nahi Kahu Hi Vyapa Sab Nar Karahi Paraspar Preeti Every citizen in Ram Rajya will have mutual respect and affection for each other and that religious, physical or material afflictions will cease to exist. So, it, Ram Rajya in that sense was not a religious concept but a idea of an ideal state and this was quoted by Mohan Bhagwat Ji and he stressed No, but while the, the leaders at the top, Pavan Ji, may have pressed all the right buttons and said all the right things, the concern is, have we unleashed a genie of Hindu triumphalism which is then difficult to repress? The Prime Minister said the right things, Yogi Adityanath was on point, Mohanji Bhagwat uh, pressed all the right buttons, but are people listening? I was at the Ghats of the River Saryu during the fireworks display when the Deep Mahutsa was happening. At that moment, at least, there was a great sense of Hindu triumphalism. Now, maybe it's just in the moment, but uh, the fact also is similar scenes were seen in other parts of the country. Now, what if you're on a Muslim on a flight where everyone is shouting Jai Shri Ram, doing, I was on a flight with Baba Bhagesh where he started doing the Hanuman Chalisa ka part, everybody else joined in. Now, what if you're a Muslim on that flight? No, absolutely right. And that's why I was referring to the messaging, because there is a danger. I am very proud of the temple, but there is a danger that when its building is interpreted by the carders, uh, for instance, of the Bajrangdal at large, it may lead to a situation which is not one of some way but which could be one of supremacism, 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 yes, <laughs> correct me, Amish and Ashwan, where it becomes one of uh, a, a division rather than unification, because Sri Ram is Nirgun Brahm. He is defined specifically by Tulsidas and Valmiki as Nirgun Brahm, which is in you, which is in me, which is a pervasive cosmic consciousness. But if this is not understood, and it becomes a reason to create divide in a society, then we will lose the balance between an assertive Hinduism and a sustainable plural republic. 